Peace be upon you. So a tactic that the Quran utilizes in order for us to understand matters is by identifying its opposite. The best example I can find that depicts this is in Surah 35, verse 19 through 22. It reads, The blind and the seer are not equal, nor are the darkness and the light, nor are the coolness of the shade and the heat of the sun, nor are the living and the dead. God causes whomever he wills to hear you cannot make hearers out of those in the graves. By identifying these opposites, one can know the other. But there's something unique about these examples. Not only are they opposites, but they are the absence of the other. So for instance, the absence of sight leads to blindness. The absence of light leads to darkness. The absence of the heat of the sun leads to coolness and shade. And the absence of life leads to death. And similarly, we can extrapolate this out to understand paradise as in being closer to God, while the absence of God is hell. In the following verse, God informs us of the opposite between what a believer fights for and what a disbeliever fights for. And we can utilize the same approach to understand these matters. So in Surah 4 verse 76, it reads, Those who believe are fighting for the cause of God, while those who disbelieve are fighting for the cause of tyranny. Therefore, you shall fight the devil's allies. The devil's power is nil. So God is giving us this dichotomy. Either we're fighting for the cause of God or the opposite of which we're fighting for tyranny. And again, the absence of one leads to the other. So by understanding what is tyranny, we can understand what is the cause of God because these are polar opposites of one another. So when we look up tyranny, what we find is that it's cruel and oppressive government rule. But it's not limited to government. Anyone who has authority or control over someone else can be a tyrant. They can treat that individual in a cruel and unjust manner. So what is the opposite of tyranny? The opposite of tyranny is liberty. The state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by the authority on one's way of life, behavior, or political views. To have a society that has freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of commerce, these are the attributes of a society that is practicing liberty which is aligned with the path of God. So by understanding what is tyranny, we can understand its opposite, which is liberty. And these two things are inherently joined together, that the absence of liberty leads to tyranny. And what's interesting is that the word choice that God selected for the word tyranny in Arabic is al-togut. Now here's the second lesson from the Quran, is that God uses word choices that have rich meanings. And it just happens that this word al-tagut is multi-meaning. One meaning is that of tyranny. The other is that of idols. So when someone reads this verse, they can interpret it that the path of God is one choice, while the path of the idols is the other. The fact that the word for tyranny and the word for idols is the same is indicative to us that those who follow the path of idols are inevitably going to lead to tyranny. Now, what's interesting is as followers of the Quran, God informs us that the name of our religion is Islam or submission in English. And someone who practices Islam is known as a Muslim or submitter in English. Now, these words also have multi-meanings. The word Islam and uh, Muslim come from the same root, which is sin lam min, which has the meaning of peace. So Islam could be understood as the religion of peace. And Muslim is a practitioner of peace. One of the verses that God utilizes to kind of demonstrate these multi-meaning facets of this word is in Surah 6 verse 125. It reads, Whomever God wills to guide, he renders his chest wide open to submission, Islam. And whomever he wills to send astray, he renders his chest intolerant and straightened like one who climbs towards the sky. God thus places a curse upon those who refuse to believe. The analogy that God is portraying in this verse is that we, as we increase in altitude, the amount of oxygen gets depleted, making it harder to breathe. And God is equating someone who practices submission, Islam, the religion of peace, as someone whose chest is open is tolerant, 
is breathing easily, is peaceful. While someone who is led astray becomes intolerant, they become agitated, they cannot breathe properly in society. These are the traits of someone who's led astray. And it's again this contrast that allows us to understand what submission is in contrast to what it is to be led astray. Now what's interesting is for a religion of peace, Islam sure has a lot of violence. So how exactly do we reconcile this? In the second chapter of the Quran, God clarifies for us that there's only three kinds of people on this planet. The first kind of people are believers. What constitutes a believer? This can be understood by reading Surah 2 verse 62 and Surah 5 verse 69 where it reads, Surely those who believe, those who are Jewish, the Christians, and the converts, anyone who, one, believes in God, two, believes in the last day, and three, leads a righteous life, will receive their recompense from their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. This verse is informing us that anyone who meets this minimum requirement, by definition, is a believer, according to the Quran. The second group of people are the disbelievers. Disbelievers are individuals who reject God, they reject His revelations, and they choose to go astray. They readily admit this. And the third group of people are the worst of the worst, and they actually fall under the category of disbelievers, but they're a class of their own, identified as hypocrites. What is the definition of a hypocrite? God informs us in Surah 61 verse 2, it says, O you who believe, why do you say what you do not do? Most abominable in the sight of God is that you say what you do not do. Individuals who claim to follow the religion of peace, who claim to follow the Quran, yet their actions depict the complete opposite, are the worst of the worst. God informs us in Surah 39 verse 32, it reads, Who is more evil than one who attributes lies to God while disbelieving in the truth that has come to him? Is hell not a just requital for the disbelievers? And in 61 verse 7 we read, Who is more evil than one who fabricates lies about God and is being invited to submission, Islam? God does not guide the evil people. Again, we see this clever play on words where God is talking about the evil people who fabricate lies to God being invited to submission, Islam or the peace, that God does not guide the evil people. These individuals who are propagating violence and belligerence are showing their disbelief, they're showing their hypocrisy. God informs us that violence and belligerence are signs of disbelief. In Surah 22 verse 72 it reads, When our revelations are recited to them clearly, you recognize wickedness on the faces of those who disbelieve. They almost attack those who recite our revelations to them. Say, shall I inform you of something much worse? Hell is promised by God for those who disbelieve. What a miserable destiny. I can guarantee you that the people who get upset hearing this verse are not those who traditionally call themselves disbelievers. They are the individuals who claim to follow the Quran, yet their actions show the complete opposite. That hearing these verses being recited to them having them called out for their brutal violence and actions, it causes them rage. And these are the individuals that God is informing us about, that they say what they do not do, that they are the worst of the worst because they are attributing lies to God. This may seem confusing for some, that why is it that so many people who are claiming to fight for a cause of God are the ones who are causing tyranny? The reality is, these individuals are fighting for the cause of the devil, and they are unaware of it. Surah 35 verse 8, it reads, Note the one whose evil work is adorned in his eyes until he thinks that it is righteous. God thus sends astray whoever wills to go astray, and he guides whoever wills to be guided. Therefore, do not grieve over them. God is fully aware of everything they do. These individuals, they think that their evil works are righteous that the devil has adorned these evil works in their eyes. And unfortunately, the Muslim world is plagued with hypocrisy and tyranny. This is indicating to us two major things. One is that the Muslim world in large is not following the religion of God. 
that they are the complete opposite of what God advocates in the Quran. And two, that they are setting up idols next to God. Because someone who's not following the religion of God, the inevitable outcome is that they have other idols beside them that's leading them to act out in such violence and belligerence and tyranny across the world. On October 16, 2020, an 18-year-old, quote-unquote Muslim, went and beheaded a civics teacher in France. Why did he do such a thing? Because this individual showed a cartoon picture of the Prophet. Now, by no means is mocking and ridiculing the Prophet justified. But the question is, is the right punishment for such a person to have their head cut off? Someone who does such actions is committing one of the most horrendous crimes. Not only did they kill the life of a person, they're attributing it to the Lord of the universe as if this is righteous actions. And this individual had no remorse. After conducting this atrocity, they went and uploaded pictures of this to social media to boast and brag about their actions. Now, this is so sick and twisted and demented, and it shows the level of influence the devil has on these people to convince them such a horrendous act is something noble and righteous. And this goes so far beyond the bounds set in the Quran. God gives us very clear instructions on what we are to do when people mock and ridicule our religion. And I can guarantee you it's not killing anyone and it's not cutting off their head. In Surah 6 verse 68, it says, If you see those who mock our revelations, you shall avoid them until they delve into another subject. If the devil causes you to forget, then as soon as you remember, do not sit with such evil people. This is what God is advocating for believers to do. Someone who truly believes in the Quran, who follows the Quran, that if they hear God's revelations being mocked, if they hear God's prophets and messengers being mocked, to not sit with them. We have no right, no justification to go and attack someone for exercising their freedom of speech. This is something that God has given every single person on this planet, irrespective if you like what they have to say or not. This is a God-given right. And the individual who takes this right away from someone else, who threatens their life or takes their life, is a tyrant and is fighting in the cause of Satan, not that of the cause of God. Just a couple days later, on October 29th, in Nice, France, another Muslim extremist took a knife and nearly beheaded one elderly man and killed two other people at a church. Now show me, where is the justification of doing such atrocities in the Quran? Throughout the Quran, God calls life sacred, that everyone has the choice to believe or disbelieve, to take that away from individuals, to kill them, to take their life, to oppress them. These are the tactics of the devil. As if that's not bad enough, on November 2nd, a lone gunman in Vienna shot and killed four civilians and injured 23 others, leaving seven critically injured. For what crimes were these people punished? Who gave this individual the right to carry out such atrocities in the name of God? These are the worst individuals in humanity to do such a, a disgusting act. And as if that's not bad enough, they attribute it to the Lord of the universe. They boast about it. These people are sick and demented, and they're doing exactly what the devil wants them to do. Then, on November 10th, 2020, an Islamic militant group backed by ISIS killed and beheaded 50 people in northern Mozambique. They said that they turned a football field into an execution site, cutting off the heads of individuals and dismembering them. These people were chanting Allahu Akbar as they were conducting such a horrendous, disgusting act. And to attribute this to the name of God makes it that much worse. These are the most despicable of the despicable. They are the worst of the worst.
Now, the Quran sets very clear guidelines to when individuals are allowed to go to war, when they are allowed to take a life. And this is best depicted in Surah 2, verse 190 through 194. It reads, You may fight in the cause of God against those who attack you, but do not aggress. God does not love the aggressors. So it's clear from this verse that God is informing believers that they are allowed to defend themselves, but under no circumstances are they allowed to be the aggressors. What these individuals have done is they are the ones who are being the aggressors. Unless their lives were threatened, unless they were physically attacked or provoked, they have absolutely no right oppressing and fighting and killing other individuals. It continues in 2.191. It says, you may kill those who wage war against you, and you may evict them once they evicted you. Oppression is worse than murder. Do not fight them at the sacred mosque, masjid, unless they attack you therein. If they attack you, you may kill them. This is the just retribution for those disbelievers. So here God is again clarifying that the only conditions by which a follower of the Quran is allowed to fight back, to take a life, is if they are being attacked, if they have war waged against them. But even then, God is informing that oppression is worse than murder. Someone who is causing tyranny, someone who is oppressing others, making them fear for their lives when they are not at war, is the epitome of someone who is not following the words of God. And it continues starting from 2192. It reads, if they refrain, then God is forgiver, most merciful. You may also fight them to eliminate oppression and to worship God freely. If they refrain, you shall not aggress. Aggression is permitted only against the aggressors. Here, God is informing us that the criteria is that an individual is not supposed to be oppressed, that someone is allowed to fight to eliminate oppression and to worship God freely. And it says that under no circumstances can someone be the aggressor. These individuals who go and take the lives of innocent people for exercising their freedom of speech or for merely existing or for going and practicing their religion or for having a different political view or belief than they do, these individuals who are oppressing them, who are taking their lives, who are causing them fear and anxiety, are doing the devil's bidding by doing such atrocities. Under no circumstances is someone who claims to follow the Quran allowed to be an aggressor. The only people we are allowed to fight against are those who are waging war against us, those who are taking up arms to fight us. God gives every individual the right to defend themselves. But under no circumstances in the Quran is someone allowed to be the aggressor? Is someone allowed to be the oppressor? Is someone allowed to go and take the lives of innocent individuals? The question is, where are they coming up with these laws? Where are they coming up with these decrees that gives them any kind of justification for these atrocities? The reality is that they're following sources beside that of God in the Quran. And it's these idols that they've set up that they're following that is causing their tyranny. And not only are they causing tyranny to others, it is even causing tyranny amongst themselves in their own families. This is what the idols they follow are imposing upon them. In Surah 6 verse 137 it says, Thus were the idol worshippers duped by their idols to the extent of killing their own children. In fact, their idols inflict great pain upon them and confuse their religion for them. Had God willed, they would not have done it. You should disregard them and their fabrications. And how is this being done? It's through the concept of honor killings. Parents who are killing their own children because they believe this is what's decreed by God because they're following the unjust laws of their idols. Now, there's so many cases of this, of parents killing their own children, that there's no way I can go through every single one. But recently in Jordan, on July 17, 2020, a video circulated of a woman who is dashing out of a house screaming into the streets and her father was close behind her. She was begging for her neighbors, her family, anyone to intervene when her father picked up a concrete block and smashed it on his own daughter's head, killing her and crushing her skull. 
Then he sat down next to her dead body and had a cup of tea and a cigarette while he waited for authorities. What kind of a sick, demented person would be able to carry out such acts? To kill his own flesh and blood in front of the masses and have no moral qualms about it. This is just how twisted the devil has turned these individuals. That their moral compass is completely flipped 180 degrees. That such horrendous acts are glorified in their eyes. That they feel no discomfort into carrying out such disgusting atrocities. They estimate that in Jordan alone, there has been about nine honor killings in this year alone. But this isn't limited to Jordan. You see this all throughout the world. In 1989 in Missouri, a 16-year-old daughter was held down by her own mother while her father stabbed her to death. And the reason was because she was listening to popular music such as dance, rap, R&B, and rock. And as if that wasn't bad enough, in the eyes of her parents, they found out that she also had a, get this, part-time job that they didn't approve on. And because of this, they thought the only remedy was to stab her with their own hands and take her life. On January 1st, 2008, two sisters in Dallas, Texas, aged 17 and 18, were shot to death by their own father. One of the daughters, before dying, called 911 and said, My dad shot me and my sister. I'm dying. The reason that the father believed he was justified in carrying out such actions was because he found out that the two sisters had boyfriends. This is disgusting that you would kill two innocent lives for choices that they made. Now, you can not approve of those choices. But to go and take the lives of these innocent children, your own children, just goes to show how demented, how twisted, how morally deteriorated this individual has become. Now, where are they getting this information from? Where are the sources who are telling them to carry out such acts? Because those are their idols. These scholars, these imams who perpetrate such actions, such atrocities in the name of God, are sick and disgusting and demented and following the path of Satan and attempting to destroy this beautiful religion we have, the religion of peace. In 2009, in Phoenix, Arizona, a father drove his car and struck and killed his own daughter in a parking lot because he was angry that the daughter was too westernized. And he thought that this was a righteous action to take part in. I can't imagine how confused, how utterly insane someone has to be to think that this is an appropriate action by any stretch of the imagination. Not only is this to another human being, this is to your own daughter. And the people who are advocating for such things are just as sick and just as demented and just as responsible. On May 14th, 2020 in Pakistan, two cousins aged 22 and 24 were shot and buried, one by her own father, the other by her brother. The reason for this was because there was a video that came out that circulated with them kissing a boy. Now, you could say that that action was inappropriate, but these are adults. They're 22 and 24 years old. And by no means does anyone have the right to take their lives for such actions. This goes far beyond anything in the Quran. This is the complete opposite of whatever's in the Quran. This is the definition of fighting for the cause of tyranny. So while God in the Quran advocates for freedom of belief, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, Freedom to live your life however you deem fit. Those who are fighting to oppose this are fighting for tyranny. They're fighting to take away the liberties of others. They're fighting to be oppressors and aggressors in society. And they're fighting in the cause of the devil and their idols. Now, how do we reconcile this? 
In Surah 4 verse 60, it reads, Have you noted those who claim that they believe in what was revealed to you and what was revealed before you, then uphold the unjust laws of their idols? They were commanded to reject such laws. Indeed, it is the devil's wish to lead them astray. These individuals claim to follow the Quran. They claim to believe in the scripture. But what they are upholding is the unjust laws of their idols. These clerics, these mullahs, these sheikhs, who are directing them towards the path of Satan. And by doing so, they're showing that they are not believers. They are the worst of the worst. They are the hypocrites. What they say is not what they do. Their actions correspond with those who are tyrants on earth, those who are oppressors and aggressors on earth. And by no means do they depict the religion of submission, the religion of peace. To claim to be a Muslim means someone who's claiming to provide peace, tranquility, and contentment. In Surah 48 verse 26 it reads, While those who disbelieved are enraged, and their hearts are filled with the pride of the days of ignorance. God blessed his messenger and the believers with peaceful contentment and directed them to uphold the word of righteousness. This is what they well deserved. God is fully aware of all things. And before we close, I just want to read Surah 61 verse 7 one more time. It says, Who is more evil? than one who fabricates lies about God and he's being invited to submission, to peace. God does not guide the evil people. So if you want to know the path of God, know its opposite. What these individuals are committing in the name of God is the opposite of the path of God because the path of God is full of peace, grace, mercy, while what these people are advocating is tyranny, oppression, and cruelty. God willing, we're going to end there. If you guys got comments or questions, please hit us up at Talk at gmail.com. If you guys like the podcast, uh, please share it with a friend. And if you want to follow along with the verses or see the verses for yourself, please download the Quran Study app on the iOS app store or go to quranstudyapp.com. And until next time, peace and God bless.